Welcome to episode 10 of Behind the Membership. In this episode, I'm talking with Laura Robinson from Worditude, and we're taking a look at how her membership has evolved in the first nine months that it's been running. And one of the things that Laura does, which is a little bit different to most memberships, is that she actually includes quite a lot of one-to-one feedback and support which isn't something you'll typically see in this kind of membership site. So Laura's membership stands out in that respect. We also talk about her initial launch and how she's using collaborations as a great way of getting ongoing members for her membership site. Whilst Laura's membership site isn't even a year old yet, there's a lot of great takeaways from this interview, so enjoy. Welcome to Behind the Membership with Callie Willows. Real people, real stories, real memberships. Today, I'm joined by copywriter and content strategist, Laura Robinson from Worditude. Thanks so much for joining me on the show today, Laura. Hello, you're welcome. (laughs) I'm excited to talk a little bit more about your membership. So let's start with the basics. Your membership site is the Worditude Club. Can you tell us a little bit more about the membership, what it offers, who it's for? Uh, Well, the Membership Club is a library of materials that will help people create the website copy that they need um, for their website and then also help them to write engaging emails for their email list and blog posts, guest posts. And then alongside that, I run a Facebook group, but also can contact me through email support so that I'm providing um, feedback on what's been written and just guidance on what content might be needed. So it's kind of a mixture between a hand-holding service, but also a pre-written content for people to work through. Oh, that's awesome. So you're kind of helping people add that extra pizzazz to their website. Yeah, um, I think, and the biggest thing that I have to help with is people really suck at selling themselves. So they find it really difficult to write anything that might be even vaguely nice about themselves on their own website. Um, so that's the hardest thing is I keep looking at what they've written and sending it back and going, no, like you can do better than that just to keep pushing them to own what they do and speak up with more pride about their work. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So it sounds like um, you have quite a lot of feedback involved in the membership, quite a lot of more one-to-one kind of content as well. There, there is now, yeah. I think um, to begin with, I had in mind that it would be much more hands-off and a more traditional type membership model because I work one-to-one with clients and then I thought this would be a more sort of based on the platform and lead them to it. But I didn't find that very rewarding. I would much prefer to get involved and be able to like get to know each of the businesses and I find that just a few minutes of input here and there can make a really big difference and, and unstick people and get them moving again. So I'm really happy to provide that input. And is that input done kind of publicly through the, I think you mentioned the communities of Facebook group or is it done privately? We can do it either way. We have, um, I'm happy to... Uh, respond by email if people prefer but often people ask in the Facebook group um, which is only the people who are members can see inside the Facebook group and that's a really good learning environment because a lot of the questions that come up are similar to the questions that other people have got but maybe they haven't got around to asking or haven't thought about yet Um, and something else that I've really enjoyed about that group is that if I'm not immediately available they are starting to chip in and help each other out which is nice as well. Yeah, it's great when your community gets to that stage where they kind of, it almost runs without you at times. It's getting there and it's, it's, I don't know the answer. If it's something that's not quite my field of expertise, people are putting the question anyway because we know that there'll be someone in there that can help them out. Yeah. So um, is it aimed at a particular type of business, the membership, or is it kind of open to anyone? It's it works best for service-based businesses and ideally have already been going for a year or so so they you know they're already confident that what they're doing works and what they're doing will make the money but they need to get in front of more people and they need to make it more efficient so I find that at the beginning we tend to woo our clients one at a time with conversations and lots of in-person meetings or Skype chats and then you get to a certain point where that's just no longer possible because you're spending a lot of your time delivering work and then you're not able to market your services in person and then that's when the website needs to step up and take over that marketing activity yeah it's that kind of next level essentially yeah so it's still fairly early days for a lot of the of my members but they they know that what they've got is a good business model and they know it's going to work they just need that help growing their audience and making it all 
a, like a seamless journey from when that person first, that audience member first meets them right through to becoming a paying customer. I help them hook all of that together so it's a seamless transition rather than just sort of throwing sales-based emails or adverts at them constantly. Yeah. And so how long has the club been open for now? Oh, since November last year, so almost about nine months now. That's gone really quickly. (laughs) Still pretty early days for you then, really. Yeah, yeah, still early days. I'm still... um, you know, still finding my feet about the direction that I want to take it in. I've built up, a, there's a good selection of content in there already. So in the early days, I was creating new content every month. And now I don't need to do that because I think that's, that becomes overwhelming for people to try and keep up with. And I didn't want to just create it for the sake of it. So now I'm working towards making that content much more easier to navigate and helping people know where they need to dive in and what they need to do next. Great. So you're you're much more flexible with that kind of content schedule now from the sounds of it. Yeah, if something comes up where um, people, you know, there's an appetite for a new piece of content. I've had a few one-to-ones with my members this summer, uh, which has helped me to get a feel for where we're going and what they want from me. And there's a couple of themes that keep coming up. One of them is like how to create a hard work and home page. So um, I don't have a module on that already. So I'll create that because I know that there's a few people that will benefit from it. Okay, great. So very much member led then in terms of what content you're creating. Definitely. And it has been from, I would say, the first three or four months. So I started out with a plan. And then um, once I had a good membership base of about 30 or 40 people, I was able to be much more led by what they wanted. Awesome. And is the content you're creating, is that courses? Is it, is it kind of articles? What kind of content is the membership made of? It's- it depends on the size of what uh, of what I'm trying to teach. It depends how ambitious it is. Sometimes I can do like small bonus guides, which are more like a very, very long blog post. If something's a bit more complicated, then I'll write a post to walk them through it and do a video at the top. So it's like the video gives an overview of what's going to be involved, a blog post that talks them through it, and then usually a workbook as well for them to start keeping track of their own thoughts or information that they want to record. Oh, great. So you're kind of delivering a few varieties of content there. Yeah, and it makes it, um, it's really flexible. So I use MemberPress, so it's really flexible how I deliver the content. It hasn't got to look the same every time. So I'm able to adapt it to whatever I think is going to be the best way of getting across my point. Awesome. So is the membership open all the time for anyone to join or do you kind of only open at certain time periods? It will be. I've closed it over the summer while I've been working um, to rearrange the library and make a smoother onboarding experience for new members. But then once it reopens at the end of September, it stays open. Okay, cool. And so was that a kind of, did you decide to just close the doors because you were rejigging a lot of things you didn't want that disruption or was it kind of more of a strategic relaunch kind of close I, it was just from the dis- I didn't think I'd be able to give the new people the attention that they deserved if I was busy doing something else so um, it made sense to me and I'm not very good at multitasking to that extent <laughs> so it makes sense to me to go I can't concentrate on that right now so we're just not going to have any new people for a while and then I'll get on with you know, making it how I want it to be and then I'll open the door so that the next wave of new people get the best joining experience that I can give them. Yeah, I think that works well if you're making kind of big changes to the site or even just rejigging things a lot and it gives you kind of that extra push when you do open the doors as well. Yeah, I'm not going to do like a massive launch. I've been thinking about that a lot and I thought I don't I don't want to get stuck back into that launching cycle because I find it really exhausting and it doesn't it doesn't really suit me. So the doors will be open and then I'm just going to carry on with my usual marketing activity and just see where it takes me. And I'm hoping for a smooth uh, number of joiners every month, just a handful of new people every month so that it doesn't disrupt the group too much. And it's manageable for me to get to know those people and get them really stuck into the materials before the next wave of people join. Yeah. So it sounds a bit more like you're going for consistency rather than quantity. Kind Definitely. Of. Yeah. So what gave you the idea to actually create the membership? It was, um, I had like a little band of followers who would ask me questions uh, in other Facebook groups or sometimes via email. And they weren't really, they weren't really in a position to work with me one-to-one as a copywriter, but also none. it wasn't as simple as just needing one page of web copy or a couple of pages of web copy. It was more about the whole like content marketing journey and the whole sales funnel. 
Um, so I was getting nudged by them. Like, we'd like something. Is there some way we can pay you? Can you do some sort of club where we can ask you for help and not feel guilty that we're doing it for free all the time? So it was definitely demand led. Um, and then I had it in my mind that I was going to do this in 2017 and um, I'd like penciled in. So it wasn't going to happen last year. And then my business coach was available for some one-to-one sessions at the end of the year. And I thought, oh, let's just do it. <laughs> so it ended up kind of taking on a bit of a life of its own. And I launched it a lot quicker than I had intended to. But it definitely helped because there was that demand there for it. So I knew I wasn't just working hard on something that was a shot in the dark and hoping that someone would want it in the end. I was trying to create something that I had already been asked for. Yeah. So did you actually involve kind of your your audience in what you were creating? Did you get their ideas on kind of content and and layout and things like that? Yeah, definitely. I was emailing them or asking them in Facebook groups. Some of them, have, uh, we've ended up being quite good friends. So we chat online a fair amount. And so I could say, this is what I've got in mind. This is how I think it's going to work. I've got a group of about four or five people that I really trust as well, that they would, I know that they would tell me if that was, not the right thing to do because it's easy to get a group of supporters who love everything that you do but that's not necessarily what you need sometimes you need someone who's going to say no that's a terrible idea because of these reasons so um yeah there was a lot of chatting with my kind of trusted circle of online business friends and they gave me a lot of the input and direction so I could feel quite confident about what I was doing Cool. And so then when you did launch the site, did you did you do a big kind of launch or was it more of a kind of softly, softly launch? <laughs> it was really, um, I think I used this analogy on in another Facebook group as well. It was like watching a drunk arrive home and trying to get through the front door. So I was so exhausted <laughs> by the time it was done. I was just like flailing around like, it's done. I finished it. It's built. You can join now if you want to. <laughs> I was just so worn out by it. So I had like a few things I had in mind that I wanted to get 40 people at the start so I did like a little star chart of um and just kept sharing that to say how just sort of keep it um visible that people were joining and you know there were people already in this club and just really ad hoc Facebook posts I don't think I'd any Facebook ads I had a relatively small email list so I emailed them a few times it was like a real cast iron example of how not to do it (laughs) but I was just so tired at the end I was like just get it done get some people through the door but were you happy with the results of the launch in the end though yeah yeah it was good I did get about 40 people I think I ended at 38 um and then I did have a period where the doors were closed after that because I needed to sleep (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah that was it was a good start It, it was what I had aimed for um, and it was a good group of people to get me started with and then once we settled into a routine then the doors have been open since then until this summer where I've decided I needed you know it comes in waves doesn't it when you decide like okay now it's time for a revamp or now it needs a bit of a makeover yeah so um this is like we're ready for phase two now from September <laughs> yeah so in terms of, you were mentioning there, the revamp and things. So what changes have you actually decided to make with the membership? Um, I'm making a stronger roadmap because your roadmap is brilliant in the uh, Member Site Academy. And I have tried one before, but it's it's really hard to get something together that's going to work for everyone when they first arrive because everyone's at a different stage in their journey. So um, I'm working on a um, one that makes it a bit easier to see where people need to join in and then how the actual library of content is laid out because when I started out there wasn't much in the library so every item in the library could have a pretty big picture and a reasonable size description and it wasn't that was fine because you could still see it fairly quickly at a glance and now there's about 15 or 16 modules on there you're going to be scrolling for a while to find the thing that you wanted so I need to find a more suitable way of organizing that Um, and I also want to work on the it's automating the onboarding so there's some emails that go out automatically for new members like to give them their login details and say welcome and that's about it everything else I've been doing manually up to this point which is quite tiring (laughs) Um, (laughs) now I need to get that because I don't know how to I don't know what I need to automate until I've done it myself a few dozen times and then think okay right now I need to automate this so I'm doing that as well 
Cool. Yeah. Automating that onboarding definitely makes a huge, huge difference. <laughs> I'm just not very good at outsourcing or automating anything. So I feel like I really need to have done it. Like I need to know how this really works before I can do a good job of automating it or asking someone else to do it for me. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit slow and painful, but I'm ready now to let go of that bit of individual attention. And I'll still be interacting with my members individually. It just means that I won't have to do those first few emails myself. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think has been your biggest challenge so far in running the membership? It's been quite hard to juggle that alongside still doing one-to-one work. Again, so I think that's not how my brain is wired. My, my brain likes to have one job, not yeah. two. And I'm already doing, this is already part-time in addition I've got two children. So there are already quite a lot of jobs going on. And so I tend to, if I uh, have a big one-to-one job on, it's really hard to discipline myself to put the time aside to keep working on the membership site. And then it's hard if I'm really involved in the membership site to remember I still need to be marketing myself as a, for one-to-one work as well. So yeah, I would say time juggling the two sides of the business has been quite a challenge. And do you have a team helping you out or is it all just you? Um, I have, um, I'm I'm amassing my team now. It's getting, it's getting bigger. I have a VA and she has a team. So it's not just one VA, she has a team. So that's great. I know that there's a lot of the um, day-to-day stuff now that lands on my door and I can just go, help me Jess, will you deal with this? And she also set up my membership site for me. So she knows how it works um, inside and out. So that's, and um, been really important to me to have someone like who can just keep the momentum going as well because I guess you find this too that you can be doing one job and then a technical problem comes up that could just throw you off track for hours but now I don't get distracted by it I can just fire that off to the my VA team and say you sort that out I'm going to stay focused on what I'm doing um, and I have a business coach um, and she helps me not lose my mind or go and get a normal job <laughs> It's like her um, her full time job is to talk me down from the cliff edge when I'm going. That's it. I'm just going to go and work in a supermarket. This is really <laughs> difficult. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Bless. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often. It's about or oh, two or three times a year, and it'll always be something really stupid that sets me off. Like if a WordPress update goes wrong, or I lose a piece of work, or then decide like this is just too much. It's too hard. And then I get out, then I get over myself. I'll go and eat some ice cream and some crisps or something. Then I'll be fine. Yeah, I, I have days like that where it's like, okay, I just you get to a certain point where it's like, yeah, I just need to go and watch like Netflix all day or something, and and come back to this tomorrow. I have like days where everything I touch breaks, and then about the, after the third thing breaking it, I'm just going to go and sit quietly in the corner where I can't do any damage. Today is not the day for working. I'm just yeah. going to go away now. Yeah, I think it definitely goes better if you just give in to that as well yeah. rather than <laughs> I'm learning. I've learned the hard way and I feel like I feel really proud of myself when I get to that moment or when I'm working on something really late at night, really, you know, like one or two o'clock in the morning and you're thinking, oh, I could just do this one extra job and the little voice inside me goes, Don't do it, don't do it, you know this is gonna go wrong. And then I've realised now I'm a grown up because I listen to that voice. And I don't push through the tiredness. I just go to bed. Whereas like three or four years ago, I'd have just carried on and made a big mess of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely been there. So if, if that's kind of the challenge, the juggling things, what's been your, your highlight or the thing that makes running the membership worthwhile for you? I really honestly love getting to see everybody's businesses and seeing the progression in them. And um, when, I, when I was working one-to-one with people, it's a smaller number of businesses that you get to see and you only get to see them for the tiniest snapshot in time. So, and usually it was for a launch. So it was exciting. So I could see that they would, and I would get repeat clients as well. So it's exciting. I can see what the new thing is they've created and help them to launch it and see the results that they have. But with the membership club, I've got people on that have been there from the beginning. So six, uh, so about nine months in now, and I can see the progression of their business in that in that time. Um, I really love seeing the progression in their writing as well because it just, you know, people arrive and they're quite stiff and corporate in the way that they write their web copy and blog posts because that's how we're taught we're supposed to write, sound professional and. Uh, grammatically correct and everything has to be done in a particular way and then 
you can see the progression of how they sound more and more like themselves on their web copy and in their blog posts see their confidence grow that they'll post more frequently on their social media pages so I just I really love seeing that and the variety of businesses are just I don't I think we might have a hand you know a couple where they're very similar but I'm 60 or so different businesses that I would not have even been able to think of I wouldn't know that that was a business but it is (laughs) you you know you know what I mean you just yeah someone has said to you like yeah I'm gonna do this as a job you just nod and go really yeah (laughs) but they are they run successful businesses and it's really exciting to see them some growing and what they want to achieve and I like the that they're all very similar in mindset to me that it's not you don't just have a business and then you know it sits at a certain point and you're happy with that they're always looking towards what's next what's next like how are we going to grow next what direction are we going to move in next and that's been encouraging for me because sometimes it feels a bit I think oh am I never satisfied because I'm always thinking what's next what's next but to be surrounded by other business owners that think in a similar way is really encouraging to think oh actually I'm not some kind of dissatisfied freak it's quite natural to be having ambitions all the time for what you want to do next yeah it sounds like a great group of members out I do of love them. <laughs> <laughs> that comes across <laughs> yeah definitely does out of interest um because obviously you're UK based is your your members majority UK based or is it quite an international audience it's completely international I think my the two furthest flung that I've got from where I live um is Chrissy and she's in Costa Rica and Jane is in New Zealand so I think we basically wrap around the world (laughs) and then there's somewhere everywhere in between there's a few in Europe um uh and then just most like America not many Australians I don't know like New Zealand like I do okay for people in New Zealand but not so many Australians um but yeah from all over the world and not even just UK speaking I've got a couple where English is their second language as well so that is also very interesting and presents a new dynamic to it <laughs> yeah definitely I, I love how international memberships can can be um, it's one of my favorite things just having members from all around the world but I'm always interested because with UK memberships in particular you either tend to find that they don't have any UK members or they're very much UK centric so I always find that a curious kind of yeah I've ended up I when I started as the like my copywriting business it's on a .co.uk um, website because I don't know I just wanted to make it clear that I was in the UK I suppose I've had a few Skype calls where people suddenly are taken aback by my British accent like, <laughs> I got a bit fed off with that I was like okay well I'm just in the UK so then at least you know what to expect but it didn't put people off so my one-to-one clients were international as well um yeah it doesn't and I wouldn't I don't think it's even skewed in any particular direction it just seems like a really good collection of people from all over the place and I have a few that don't stay still either so sometimes they're in Switzerland and then sometimes they're in Bali or sometimes they're in Australia and sometimes they're in France so it's hard to keep track of them because they keep moving around (laughs) (laughs) they're living the like entrepreneur traveler lifestyle that I can only dream of as I'm in my shop office in Essex. <laughs> Your shop office? Shop office, shed office. Uh, <laughs> my neighbour christened it. <laughs> Quite like that. So let's shift gears a little bit now then and talk about what you're doing to actually grow the membership. So obviously the doors are closed at the minute while you're revamping things, but when they were open, what was working well for you when it came to attracting new members? Um, I think one thing that helped me to get in front of new people is when I collaborate with other business owners and also that's really cost efficient because I don't pay anything for it or we pay you know some Facebook ads but the budget is nothing like what you need when you're trying to get something going on your own so I've done um collaborations where I've contributed to their programs where they run a program and then I'm like a guest speaker on it or um like uh, on a live event so I'll be on a call with them um we did a collaboration a f- couple of months ago it might, might only been a month ago um female entrepreneur week where a few of us got together and we all had different specialisms so uh, we had my business coach Nadia was in it and Caroline who's my Facebook ads person and I'm gonna I'm not gonna start naming people because then I'll forget <laughs> <laughs> someone off the list um but we 
got together and did a week-long program of events just giving away information for free for people who were starting out and they weren't necessarily our target audience but it was just we thought like when we were starting we really wish someone had told us this stuff so we're going to just let other people hear it for free um so I've always got something like that on the go because I like to team up with other business owners and then it gets me in front of their audience and then we can usually grow uh, getting more people in just because you're doing something you know any amount of activity attracts attention so I try to do something like that at least every other month awesome and I think with copywriting as well it's so relevant to pretty much everybody's business it is great and I've been able to piggyback onto other people's programs so when um like for people who are Facebook ad specialists it's still helpful for them to have my input so I'm not just about writing web copy. I can jump into different programs and help their audiences with anything to do with words, really. So that has meant it's very flexible in terms of the audiences I can get in front of. Awesome. And so once someone's actually joined, how do you keep them coming back month after month? How are you keeping them engaged? So when they first join, we do a 20-minute um well, it's supposed to be 20 minutes, but we talked for too long. Um, <laughs> a Skype call where I just get to know where they are in their business and, um, and I get a feel for what would be the materials that's most going to help them. And I started doing that as an experiment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it because it, it's so helpful for me to know exactly where they are when I then give them feedback on other pieces of work they do further down the line. And so from that point, we make a 90-day programme of these are your priorities for the next 90 days. And then we just make sure that every month we're rolling, keep updating that. So we always know what are like the most important next steps. Um, and usually like people follow the same pattern. Yeah, the, you need to get your website in order first so that, because there's no point going out getting a huge audience of people if your website's not ready to receive that big audience and to use that audience efficiently to convert into sales. So our first step is to get the website sorted out. And then we look into growing the audience and then how do we nurture once they're coming in as onto your email list, what do you do to nurture them to keep um, those sales going? So I'll find that naturally like a next step opens up. As soon as you've done one thing, you can add another thing to the to-do list. Um, so it kind of naturally rolls on that they'll still need me the next month. I love that you kind of have that personal touch. I think for a lot of people, they wouldn't necessarily go to doing that kind of one-to-one call with the membership because it it obviously doesn't scale very well. Um, Yeah, I've had to to think about it a lot because that's not the natural way to do things. And um, I had to sit and think, like, I don't, I know how to, I know it's not scalable. I know that that's not going to get me hundreds of members. And after a lot of thinking, I thought actually that's not why you went into business. I went into business so that I could do work that I loved and get paid for it. And so then it was my job to decide what that looks like. It wasn't my job to create a membership site that works on paper or is how everybody else tells you how to do it. It was my job to make a membership site that was exactly what I wanted. That would be like my dream job to turn up and do every day. So, that's how that's come about because that is how I wanted to be spending my time and how that's the level of engagement I wanted to have with my members. I appreciate that that's not going to work for everybody. No, I love that though. And I I love that you've actually sat down and thought about, okay, so what do I want from this membership? What's going to work for my members? You know, what, what are my actual goals and what's going to make me happy? Because I think as you, you touched on there, so many people are just like, well, a membership has to be X, Y, Z. So I can't do this, but I I do think having it in a way that works for you, makes you happy, makes you want to do it long term and fits you with your goals is is essential. And, you know, yes, that one to one element might make it a little less scalable, but you've already mentioned that you're kind of wanting that consistency rather than quantity anyway. Yeah, definitely. And I think like it got scary to me to think, okay, if I scale it, what does it look like in a year? What does it look like in two years? And I it it wasn't I wasn't working towards some a model where I can outsource almost everything and I can have limited input. I, that's not what I want right now. Maybe in the future that's something I want and I'll create a different product to do that. But it just didn't suit what I wanted right now. So um and it didn't suit what what my members want either. They've really responded well to having that one to one input. And it's there is a bit of a gap I think between um 
you know, one-to-one work or you can pay a lot of money for a very short-term program where it's high intensity. But what if you just want a little bit of help every now and then to keep you chugging along, which is basically what I want to deliver. Yeah, and it sounds like you've, you've kind of found a good place in the market there for that as well. I think so. It seems, you know, and it's been well received. So time will tell when I reopen in September. If at Christmas, okay, nobody else has joined, then I've, then I've made a mistake. But I think I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds like you're, you're doing a good job and that, you're, you know, people are wanting this. It's, and it, one of the loveliest things to hear is from people who are sort of relatively early in their business and they'll say that on their wish list of things that they want when they're making more money is that they would like to be able to join the club. Like that's something that they aspire to. Because it's not, you know, massively financially out of reach. But I remember having that when I was starting out. Like I wanted to buy, I, one of my things on my wish list was like, I wanted to buy a Yeti mic. <laughs> like and it, now it was not a big deal. But at the time, I was like, I really want to do that. Or I wanted to join certain programs. So I wanted to be able to spend money on Facebook ads. So it's nice to know that my little program makes it onto other people's lists of things they wish they could buy. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome when you're on people's kind of wish list for one day. Yeah. And the other thing that's really cool is when people print out my workbooks and then they post a picture of it and say like, oh, I'm working on this today. And I think, oh, neck, I made that on my computer. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Okay, so let's talk about life as a membership site owner now. So you've already mentioned that this is kind of part time with you. You're still doing one to one work, and you've got your your kids as well. So, what does a typical day look like for you now? You have the membership. Has it changed your daily routine much? Um, it's changed the routine over the week. So I have um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are membership days, and then if I have uh, one-to-one work I've slot them in on Tuesdays and Thursdays so that I've so over the course of the five days everything gets looked at um, and that was working fine um, while the children were at school and we had a normal household routine and then in May my husband got made redundant so he's been home for four to 12 weeks now um, and that has strained things off a little bit because and the kids are on summer holidays so nobody needs to leave the house ever so we're slowly becoming more and more nocturnal and um, we don't go to bed at a sensible time or eat at normal times so I would like to pretend that I've managed to maintain a nice healthy working week but that's not happened at all um, but I'm sure I'll get back to it in September. I think the good thing with the membership though is that you can be quite flexible with your time most of the time there's there's not normally the same kind of deadlines or time schedules with a membership that you would have with other kinds of businesses yeah, definitely and I've been able like I haven't taken on one-to-one clients over the summer because I know I haven't got the mental space to deal with it like I, if I'm going to have a one-to-one client I need the whole day to be really peaceful and, and not have any distractions and I that's not possible over the summer holidays um but with the membership club, it's like it's a different. It feels like it's a different part of my brain that's required to answer questions and give feedback than is to write copy. So um, I can cope with doing that in much smaller chunks of time. It doesn't irritate me as much when I get interrupted because I find it easier to jump back in where I was. So it's much better suited to family life. Cool. And so overall, what impact would you say having the memberships had on your your life and business so far? Obviously, it's still early days, but. Um, how do you think it's kind of affected what you're doing? It's definitely it's smoothed my income um, because I think like a lot of people who work one-to-one, especially copywriters, it's a bit of a feast or famine. Like if either, you're either begging people to leave your lane because you've got so much work on and then you turn around and they've all gone and there's nothing to do for three months. So it's definitely um, smoothed my workload and smoothed my income. It's helped me to just be better. Like it helped me to be better at it as well. And my um, I'm having to learn new things all the time because as much as I think I know someone's always one of my members is always going to come back and ask me a question I don't know the answer to so then I'm having to research and learn more things all the time which I really enjoy um, and it's the having the membership club does naturally market my one-to-one services because I'm constantly marketing the club, but there's always going to be those people that just look at that and go, no, I don't want to have to figure out this myself. I just want to pay you and you do it for me. So it's made it easier to get one-to-one clients because there's always some sort of marketing noise going on around my business now. Whereas before I would definitely go very quiet when I didn't want any more clients because I was overbooked. And then when those clients ran out, 
it would be too quiet and I didn't have anyone to work for. Yeah, so you have that more kind of natural flow into the one-to-one services now, really. Yeah, definitely. It's much more consistent. So it is a very early days in the membership still, but is there anything you would do differently if you were starting the Worditude Club again now? I don't know, really. I I think it would have been nice to have planned like a proper launch, but then... On the other hand, I'm the kind of person that could plan for a really, really long time and not actually do anything. <laughs> um, in my f- previous job, when I like, had a corporate job, a proper job, where I left the house and got paid a regular salary, <laughs> um, wow. I, was a, I was a project manager, so that was my job, was to plan and plan and plan things. And then I had a team of people underneath me that would do it. So I didn't actually have to do any of the stuff. I would just have this amazing plan and then point at people and say, like, you're doing this and it needs to be done by this date. And I would... Um, just keep track of their delivery and the adjustment to being me who has to plan it and do it is really difficult and I would tend to find myself getting trapped into just doing a lot of planning and not actually doing it so although it looks kind of messy and maybe in an ideal world there would have been more planning I think knowing myself the only thing that was going to work is if someone like fired the starter gun and I just started running as fast as I could and see what happens yeah sometimes you've just got to do something rather than kind of plan to do something then think about it yeah yeah I've definitely fallen into that trap before as well and you get then you just get the fear as well that it doesn't matter how much you plan it's still not going to be perfect so at what point do you just say oh let's just do it yeah I think that's one of the things we see most in the academy is people that kind of they get to that point where they they can launch but they don't because there is that kind of, well, it's not perfect or I'm not quite sure how to do X, Y, Z. And it's kind of like, you know, it's never going to be perfect. Just do it. Yeah. And when I was setting up my membership site, some of the materials that I'd written, that was coming out of documents that I wrote two years ago because I already knew I already knew that the structures that I used to do my one-to-one clients, I was writing them down thinking this is, you know, I could teach people how to do this for themselves. So at the back of my mind, I already had this plan and so I was already gathering materials that I would put into a club and I think I was just about getting to the point where you know it was the perfect time to just get on with it because if it had been any longer I'd be looking at that thing and kicking myself thinking you sat on this idea for years whereas at the point where I launched I thought I have sat on the idea for a while but I've let it kind of ripen and mature and I've you know I've improved my skills and grown my audience so now is the right time. Yeah, I think that's great when you've got material already to kind of kickstart things as well. Yeah, almost everything that I opened with, I'd already got. I mean, obviously needed to make it look more professional and it was just my notes that I'd used for myself. But I had been collecting that material through all my different client jobs and tweaking it. I had like my own templates, my own instructions that I went to, even even though I didn't really need to read the instructions before I wrote a sales page because, you know, I know it off the back of my head now, but back of my head off the back of my hand what's my <laughs> expression <laughs> um, I know it like the back of my hand but um I would still keep refining those templates and those instructions because I knew at some point I'd want to share it with other people I love that so what does the future hold then what are your goals for the club uh, where would you like to be in the next 12 months I just for the next 12 months as a family we'd really like to settle down into a routine with uh, and so I don't know how um, I won't be working full time on it at the moment I'm working full time because my husband's home so now I'm going to need to make the adjustment back to only being part time Um, and I want a nice stable year of consistent growth and just helping my members and nothing crazy no big launches um, I think sometimes you need a year like that to kind of regroup and to, to just feel like normal life for a little while. So nothing crazy. I'll probably end up launching something in about three months. <laughs> now. I've said that, but my plan is nothing crazy for the next 12 months. Yeah, I, I agree with you that actually sometimes what you need is just kind of that consistency, that that continual growth as opposed to any huge jumps or leaps and things. Yeah, that's- and- I'd like it to feel like uh, we'd call it when a project finished, then it says it goes to business as usual. So like this is the new normal. This is what our new working life or routine looks like. And that's what I'd like, just a year of kind of business as usual and just see what that looks like. And then probably from that, it will inspire new ideas or I will want to move 
in a particular direction, but I would like some, at least a few months of just consistent business as usual life. That would be lovely. <laughs> well, fingers crossed for that for you. Yeah, <laughs> I can't type if I've got my fingers crossed there, so that's... <laughs> I never say that. I just think this crosses that. I'm always tapping away at the keyboard. That's not going to work. <laughs> I have to cross my toes instead. Yeah. Uh, okay. So thank you so much for sharing your journey so far with Flora. If anyone wants to improve their copywriting or just find out more about you or the membership, where can they find you? They just go to worditude.co.uk and then in the menu bar, there's a section that says free free resources. And that's my vault of all of the free content that I've, ever put out there um, and, and it's actually quite well organized now because please admire that because it took me hours to put that together and it doesn't even ask for an email address so you can just go to it and dip in there's things there on um how to get blog post ideas how to uh, sort your copy out for a launch so lots of different um resources that might be useful for people who run their own business awesome uh yeah so thank you so much for joining me today it's been great talking with you laura and yeah i'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds for the word at you club and uh, i will keep everything crossed for that business as usual year for you it's a nice a nice quiet life that's what i'd like thanks <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you so much thanks kelly Thank you so much once again to Laura for sharing her membership journey with us in this episode. And thank you so much for listening. That's actually it for season one of Behind the Membership. This is our last episode, but don't worry, we'll be back with you for season two shortly. I really hope you've enjoyed this season and I really hope that you've got some good takeaways from all the different people I've interviewed. And a big thank you once again to all of my guests this season for sharing their membership sites with us. Hopefully it's given you a good idea of what running a membership site is really like and all the different ways that a membership can be run as well because there isn't a one size fits all approach. If you have enjoyed this season, I would love to hear your biggest takeaways over in our free Facebook group at talkmemberships.com. And don't worry about missing me too much. You can find me writing over on our blog at themembershipguys.com. And of course, if you're a member of Membersite Academy, you'll find me in there too. And if you're worried about what's going to fill your podcast ears while you wait for season two, then do check out Mike Morrison's The Membership Guys podcast, which offers great tips and advice for membership site owners. That's it from me. Thank you so much for joining me for this season. Thank you once again to all my guests and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed today's episode of Behind the Membership, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Member Site Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback encouragement and advice the member site academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start manage and grow a successful membership website so check it out at membersiteacademy.com